Starting January 1st, the VA will start processing claims under the Promise to Address Comprehensive Toxics Act, also known as the PACT Act. Dennis McDonough is the Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs. Mr. Secretary, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Mimi. So first remind us what the PACT Act is and what it means for veterans. So what this is is a, a new law that says if you served in Southwest Asia, so basically that big swath of uh, territory from Somalia in the southwest to Uzbekistan in the northeast with Iraq and Afghanistan right in the middle, and you were exposed to toxins during that period, we now have a process where, whereby we'll assume that if you have a condition among the 25 or so conditions listed in that law, we will assume that you got that condition while you were serving overseas uh, in that region. And that means that you qualify for benefits and you qualify for care. So what this means is that uh, particularly for those uh, Gulf War veterans, those post 9-11 veterans, uh, having waited far too long to get care and benefits for these kinds of conditions, we now have a process to get you that care, those benefits, so we really want you to, to apply. Before the act, you had to prove that you got it because of that toxic exposure and, yes. and as a result of your service. That's right. There's two questions. Do you have the condition in question? And did you get it while you were serving the country? Uh, we still have to answer the first question. Do you have that condition? But this question of whether you have it, we will now assume that for purposes of benefits and care, you got it while serving the country, meaning that the burden of proof is no longer on the veteran. You recently started screening for toxic exposure for all vets enrolled yeah. in VA health. How is that going? Well, it's going pretty well. So as of uh, November 8th, last Tuesday, uh, every veteran currently in our care, already enrolled for care at the VA, uh, when he or she comes in to see their provider, the provider will spend uh, you know, about 10 minutes with them asking about potential exposure. So about 150,000 veterans have had that screening to date. Uh, about, interestingly, about 40% of them uh, say they're worried about a particular exposure. Now, that's important for two reasons. One, that allows us to take the next step and look more deeply at what they might have been exposed to. But it also underscores an important point. These are veterans who have a relationship with us already. Imagine the millions of vets not yet in VA care if 40% of them feel similarly, that they've been exposed we have an opportunity with this new law to get them care and benefits that they and their families deserve. What's the process for filing a claim? And, and have you been able to streamline that process? It's a great question. So uh, we've had, again, about 145,000 claims filed since the president signed this bill into law on August 10th. My sense is, you can see that as a big number, a small number. I prefer to see it as a small number because there's as many as 4 million veterans who may qualify for care and benefits under this act. Uh, what I'd urge veterans to do is two things. One, call us at 1-800-MY-VA-411 or visit us at www.va.gov slash PACT. Uh, and we'll begin that process of helping you fill out your claim. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward process. We're just doing now some market surveys of those 150,000 or so who have filed a claim. Uh, as many as 60% of them are answering the question, was it easy to file your claim? They're answering that a yes. I think that's a good sign. We'll see if those numbers hold, um, but please visit us at va.gov slash pact or call us 1-800-MY-VA-411. What, what about the claims that were denied in the past before this PACT Act? Yeah, passed. we're asking you to come refile with us um, and uh, we'll get that process moving. Now, we have a bunch of paperwork to do. We have to s establish what we call sub-regulatory guidance. We're in that process now. That process will be done by January 1. So if you file now, starting January 1, we will review that claim. But one more important thing, Mimi, for those veterans out there, please, if you file in the year after the president signed the law, so if you file before August 9th, 2023, 
that means your benefits will be retroactive to the day the president signed it, meaning your, your, you will, in, you will uh, accrue benefits going back to August 10th, 2022. So it really behooves our veterans. Please come file a claim. We'll get to work on it, but importantly, it will then accrue back to August 10th. I wonder if you'll be reaching out proactively to vets that you think should be filing and haven't yet. Uh, in fact, we are. That's why I'm here with you today. I love working with you, but I'm here particularly today to talk about this among our government employees who are veterans. At VA, almost 40% of our employees are vets. Um, we're talking to every federal government agency about getting with their workforces. Uh, we've already done it at DHS. We'll be doing it with several others over these coming weeks. We're also, you'll be seeing uh, pretty aggressive work with uh, social media. Uh, I'm sure you're seeing reporting in traditional media. And as we approach January, uh, as we approach December, because January is so important for us, that's when we get to start reviewing the claims, we'll be talking uh, across the country in every state with a week of action where we're going to be working with local veterans, with local stakeholders to make sure that vets know what's available to them and urge them to come in and, and file a claim. Lastly, we're also talking to families. You know what happens a lot of times is it's the families who urge vets to go in and file for their claims. So we're talking to husbands, wives, sons, daughters to make sure vets know what's available to them. Mr. Secretary, as you said, there are over um, 145,000 claims already filed. Yes. You're expecting a lot more. Yep. How many people are you going to have to hire yep. to, to go through all those claims? It's a great question. So uh, we started about a year ago uh, on the benefits side of the house, uh, the Veterans Benefits Administration. In late September uh, 2021, we began hiring 2,000 additional claims personnel to be looking at those uh, claims. That's why now we've hired those people, we're training them. Uh, they're getting up the power curve to make sure that they can make good quality, transparent decisions for our veterans. Uh, we're probably gonna need a couple thousand more on top of that. So the training uh, challenge on the be benefits uh, side of the house is twofold. One, we need to find the employees. Two, we need to train them. That training tail can be up to a year, even longer, before they're performing at the level we expect them to perform. So that's where we are on the benefits side. On the healthcare side, you know, we may have you know several million new patients in the VA healthcare system, which is great news for us because vets in our care do better than vets not in our care. Uh, so we need to hire docs. We need to hire nurses. Let me give you two examples of what we need. Nurses, we need about 45,000 nurses over the next three years. This last fiscal year, we added about 2,500 nurses net net, uh, which tells you that we have a long way to go, but we have the tools to do it even in a competitive market. Secondly, uh, frontline staff. So uh, in, uh, environmental services staff, for example, July was the biggest single month for hires of frontline staff and VA ever. That tells us, again, we have the tools, thanks to Congress, thanks to the president. We just have to get on it in terms of hiring nurses, docs, frontline staff. We'll do it. Before we leave the PACT Act, I want to yeah. ask you about the timeline. Once you start processing claims, how long before vets get decisions, get yep. benefits, and get care? Well, uh, we want to move with as much dispatch as we can. We will start reviewing cla these claims in January. Uh, some of those claims will be straightforward. They'll be resolved in days. Some will take weeks, some will take months. The most important thing is when a veteran files a claim, we'll be in touch with that veteran, making sure that they know what to expect. Um, but please file your claim now. We'll begin reviewing them, making decisions in January. We'll stay in very close touch with the vet, with that vet's family. In early November, you had said that uh, claims processing times in yep. general yep. Um, were improving. Yep. How much have they been improving and, and what's behind that improvement? Well, so we're, we're now uh, resolving claims, uh, more claims in a year than ever. Last year, we resolved 1.7 million claims. That was the highest ever year. The next highest year was the, the immediate prior year. 
Uh, what, why are we moving faster? We're moving faster because we have more people and we're beginning to uh, squeeze out unnecessary steps in the process. For example, we don't want to send a vet back to get one more healthcare screening, one more health uh, exam when we don't have to. We want to make a decision for that vet with the data we have. And then the second thing we're doing is we're using automated decision tools more and more. That's allowing us to resolve cases that would have taken weeks and days. So by making the process more straightforward, by making the process automated in certain places, we think we can bring those uh, decision times down further still. Uh, that's what we hope to begin doing in uh, January on these PEG deck claims. I want to ask you about Roe v. Wade. Yes. Uh, after it was overturned, the VA announced it would start providing abortion counseling and services in some cases, right. um, in, in the VA hospitals. What right. was behind that decision? The health emergency. Uh, we heard from our health care providers. We're a high reliability or organization uh, at VA. You know what that means? That means health care decisions will be made by health care experts. Uh, they'll be made as close to care as possible. We don't need bureaucrats like me in Washington making decisions about veterans' health. After the ruling at the court, we heard from our providers that the confusion about what was applicable for veterans health was creating a healthcare emergency for the 300,000 women vets of childbearing age who get their care from VA. So we made the decision based on the needs of our providers, but most importantly, the needs of uh, those 300,000 women vets to provide uh, abortion counseling and abortion services in a couple of narrow areas. One, cases of rape and incest. Two, in cases where uh, the pregnancy uh, threatened the life or the health of that pregnant veteran. So we're uh, using that authority now. We're obviously responding to public comment on that, consistent with the rulemaking process. And we'll continue to uh, unfold uh, this very transparently. And any thought given to expanding those services beyond those emergencies that you outlined? At the moment, we're providing service consistent with the interim final rule we filed. We also have an obligation pursuant to the uh, Administrative Procedures Act to respond to the tens of thousands of comments that we've gotten. We'll respond to those, make the changes we need to, and then see how this unfolds. Importantly, uh, we believe that we've begun to address the healthcare emergency that our providers uh, and many veterans pointed out, uh, we'll stay on top of this. Secretary McDonough, always great to see you. Thank you so much. Great to see you, Mimi. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.